Right, so let's have a look at number six here. Um, we have a sketch of a part of a graph for f of x where we are told what the thing is. Uh, so f of x equals 2 modulus of 3 minus x plus 5. And we've got that the domain is x is better than or equal to 0. And so it's saying solve the equation f of x equals a half x plus 30. So what I'm going to do here is actually try and sketch f of x from the beginning so that I can actually get the numbers uh, and some understanding of coordinates on the graph of f of x. So uh, if we think about f of x is 2 modulus of 3 minus x plus 5. So really our starting point here is to start off by sketching y equals 3 minus x. Now 3 minus x is a straight line with a y-intercept of 3. So negative gradients as downward sloping. When y equals 0, x equals 3. So we have this. Okay. And then uh, what I have is if I sketch y equals modulus of 3 minus x, well, that then implies that anything below the x-axis gets reflected in it. So our next thing that we are going to do here is everything below the x-axis is going to get reflected in it. Um, and so we get a v-shape that looks like so. The next transformation that we are going to do is have two sketch y equals two modulus of three minus x. Now that is a stretch parallel to the y axis scale factor two. Okay, so now we are going to get something that looks like this. Now the x coordinate of the root essentially is not going to be affected because this affects the y values. It's going to affect our y intercept. Instead of being three, it is now going to be six. Okay, and then finally, the last step that we are going to do is translate it by vector zero five because the plus five is going to affect the y axis and it's essentially saying shift the whole graph up by five. So uh, it's going to look like this. Now, the minimum of this graph is going to be at five. The y intercept was six before, but if I shift it up by five, it becomes 11. And the x coordinate of the minimum is still three. Now, we placed a restriction we had a domain where x is only greater than zero so we're going to remove everything before um, and we're going to remove everything before x equals zero on this graph and so this graph looks like a sort of a tick yeah. so now that i've got a better understanding of that graph it's going to be much easier to solve this equation where f of x equals a half x plus 30. So the key thing to do here now is sketch that on the same graph as f of x to get an understanding of what's actually taking place. So let's do that. Um, this is 11, goes down as low as 5 and then goes up has a gradient of positive one um, actually one thing i will say is um yeah all right we'll leave it at that uh, for the time being 
this is 11 and this is 5. Now half x plus 30 is something I'm going to do now in a different colored pen. Let's do it in a red. Now 30 is going to be up here somewhere so and it's not going to be as deep as the positive gradient of this part so maybe something that looks like this now what we can see sorry it's so thick there so this is going to be 30 what we see is that there is only one intersection and that's with this part of the graph now what's important to realize is that this was 3 minus x this part of the line is still 3 minus x this now has become uh, minus 3 plus x when i multiply by 2 i get 6 minus 2x and this is going to become minus 6 plus 2x and when I shift it up by 5, this part of the line, the downward sloping part of the line, is going to become 11 minus 2x. Uh, and the positive gradient part of the line is going to be uh, minus 1 plus 2x. Okay, so that's important to understand that actually what's going on for each section of the line and it's always a good idea to put the equation for each part of the line on there as and when you transform it especially for questions like this where you need to solve an equation so what we realize the parts of the line which meet on, on f of x, this part of the line has equation minus 1 plus 2x. And obviously the equation of this red line is a half x plus 30. And they only meet once because before x equals 0, f of x does not exist. So all we need to do now is say, well, minus 1 plus 2x is equal to a half x plus 30 and then solve this equation so we get 3 over 2x equals 31 x equals 62 over 3 um, and there is our solution we could work out the y coordinate as well we could say y equals a half x plus 30 so what we're going to do is do a half times by 62 over 3 plus 30 not that we need to because we've already solved the equation we found the x coordinate this is optional by the way i'm just showing you the coordinates of where they intersect. So we get 62 over 6 plus 180 over 6, which is 242 over 6. And so the coordinates of where those lines meet, the x coordinate was 62 over 3, and the y coordinate was 200 and 42 over 6. But this, like I said, was optional. We didn't need to do this. This was just for your further understanding. All right, let's have a look at part B. Now, um, it says, given that f of x equals k, where k is a constant has two distinct roots state the possible values of k so f of x equals k not y equals k so 
So what are we going to do here? Well, we know what f of x, uh, so if we sketch y equals f of x and y equals k, y equals f of x, we know what that looks like. So it looks like this tick here. This is 11. This is 5. This is 3. Um, and y equals k is going to be a horizontal line. Now we want to draw a horizontal line where there are going to be two solutions. So anything above 11, there's only one intersection of that horizontal line with f of x. Anything below 11, I've got two all the way up to as low as five but at five there's only one intersection so what we can say is that as long as k is less than 11 or equal to 11 there are going to be two solutions but k must be greater than five for there to be two solutions two distinct routes